cause of mind healing and how thoughts become things. I graduated with honors and I was asked to head up New Thought Institute of New York in the heart of New York City and did so for 10 years. Uh, involved in advanced <coughs> studies, speaking, teaching, organizing, running both the loftiest and the most mundane practical aspects of a huge uh, business. My doctorate was awarded at the United Nations for an original series on global divine or higher consciousness, a series of original works. And all I can say about all of this is before enlightenment, chopping wood, after enlightenment, chopping wood. <laughs> so I have served on your board for three years, and I have been pleased to serve each president to my best ability, being there when they need me, and acting as a liaison with the people, which is the office of vice president is very like that. You're there for the people, and that's one of my most favorite things to do. I believe in the good of the whole, not self-interest, and the rewards of service. My father, as to integrity, honesty, my father was with the IRS, a fabulous man, so I add a kind man. He operated by the law, but he was so kind. And uh, so I definitely believe that integrity and following the rules that a society necessary ha has to set up for itself should mark every phase of business operations, every phase of life. This combined with inspiration always brings the greatest and most enduring success in ways one can be very proud of and continuously build on. Otherwise, it keeps falling apart. I've seen it over and over again in my work where I deal with many issues that people daily confront. I have been schooled in business practices by the very best, starting with my own very exceptional father, and then with all the exceptional mentors that have guided me at every stage. I am a pioneer in spirit, always looking toward the greater and the better and believing that it can be done. I promise you, and won't go into my vision for I-4 because I believe your questions will cover that. Uh, yes, you should wrap it up. Okay. So I did promise you when I first came on to be solution-oriented. I do believe problems only exist as catalysts for right ideas, new ideas. And so as a whole, I hope we will continue to work together objectively looking at what is working, what is not throughout our history, and being willing to change accordingly, always being open to new ways. I have kept my promise. My inner fealty is towards all that is just, honest, re-energizing, successful, and for the benefit of the people. My outer actions reveal the same, from organizing the fabulous Independence Day rock concerts, an all-day party to, you know, to intense working on all the new amendments we passed last year that need to be implemented now. Linda, Linda, try to wrap it up, please, okay. because we have so, everyone else that needs to speak, okay. okay? So I believe in aligning through positive, strong goals, being ready to act and change, and respond to beneficial opportunities that present themselves, we can recover no problem. Thank you Thank for allowing you. me the time to speak to you. Francis Mesero, and I'm currently the president of your association. I think that uh, just about all of you know me. Uh, some of you think I'm fine. Others can't stand the sight of me. And uh, I uh, make enemies very easily because I'm very, very um, uh, dogmatic. I'm very strong about what I believe in, and uh, I... Uh, usually try to have my way because I think that I was uh, elected by you to use good common sense to run the association to the very best advantage of the village and not for any uh, personal gain of my own. 
and certainly not for the personal gain of anybody else in the village or on the board. Uh, if I have the privilege of serving on the board for another two years, I would only promise you more of the same. What you see is what you get. I have a very good, strong business background, and despite uh, Mr. Samuels uh, characterizing me as some stupid, uh, uh, oh, I can't even think of some of the names he's called me, but some of them are good. Our arrogant ass is my favorite. Uh, I do have a very good, broad business background. Uh, I am a licensed paralegal. My specialty in recent years was contracts, and I very proudly say that I negotiated contracts for my company that resulted in millions and millions of dollars in revenue. Uh, I am not a shrinking violet. I will always vote my conscience. I will always try to do what I feel is best for the community. I could never ever be accused of running a popularity contest. I would certainly fail. So all I can say to you is that if you choose to keep me on the board for another two years, I will again give you my very best service to try to run the condominium to the best advantage, to enhance the appearance of the common elements, to conserve our funds, and to do just the very best job, which is what you should expect of every member on the board. I thank you. Hi, I am Ann Rosenson. Here's a quick sketch of my background. I grew up in Brooklyn, New York. I am, uh, I am a, an alumni of CCMY. I married a Chicagoan and spent my life till now in Chicago. I taught, I did social work, I worked hotlines, PA for certain organizations. I recorded for the blind and for many years I was a court observer under the auspices of the League of Women Voters. I'm proud to say that some of my reports led to some changes in the system. When my children left the nest, three of them, a doctor, a lawyer, and a psychologist, uh, with my husband's blessing, I went into business for myself. I ran my own business for 20 years, and with all due modesty, I was extremely successful. I did all the buying, selling, and had full fiscal responsibility. My customers, my suppliers, my help, and my accountant were my board. I listened carefully to their ideas and considered them before I made my decisions. That's really how a board should work, with input and consideration. It has been a challenge serving on this board. There are one or two members who continually blow problems out of proportion, and in my opinion, invite the residents to panic. I dealt with this problem by agreeing when it was good for the residents and saying nay when I felt they were, again, in my opinion, uh, self-serving alarmists. You may have read all the negative things Scott and Stewart have written about me or heard them say I was not qualified. The Sales and Lease Committee, which I chair, has been vigilant in qualifying applicants. Scott claims I have not been good at that job. However, neither my committee nor I have been sued for discrimination. Scott, however, was sued and lost the discrimination suit. But whatever, what was, was. Today, however, we have come into, not through a miracle, but through work and persistence, a great deal of money. These two board members would like for the association to go into the real estate business. But this money has been earmarked for long overdue repairs, like roofs, elevators, windows, meters, and maybe cameras. And then there is an absolute must to put some money away so that we don't fall into this pit again. And he says we can't be trusted with this money when this is our goal. Is he implying only he can be trusted? It would be a big mistake not to keep the current board majority sitting. I would worry for the association if this does not come to pass.
slow getting up. I have a new hit. Uh, my name is Michael Shankle. I Can you hear me? Uh, I'm from upstate New York. Grew up in upstate New York. I graduated from the University of Buffalo with a degree in sociology, uh, after which I lived uh, and worked for many years in New York in the garment district as an employee and uh, as an owner of two businesses in wholesale, retail, and marketing in uh, various areas of, uh, of the garment business. I moved to Florida in 1997, where I established myself as a real estate uh, professional. Shortly after that, I uh, purchased a unit here in International Village. I've been an owner for seven years, and my family also owns two other units. So we, together we have three units here in the, in the village. Uh, I've been very active. Of course, I, I sent my resume out, which I wrote, and didn't bring it with me, but so I think I can remember most of what I've done here. I've been very involved in, uh, in uh, the board activities here. I've only been a member of the board for one year, but prior to that I was able to make some changes to our condo docs, which uh, were important in... Uh, oh, thank you, Jerry. Uh, all right, let me, uh, this will make it a little easier and I won't stutter. Uh, my academic background includes the bachelor's degree in sociology. I graduated from University of Buffalo, 35 years of business experience as an employee and as an owner in the New York, New York Garment District. During that same period, I served on the board of directors of a large uh, JCC in upstate New York. Five of those years as president of the board. I was also a 20-year member of the B'nai B'rith, serving and chairing on several committees and then when I moved to Florida in 97, I began uh, my successful career in uh, real estate uh, until I was diagnosed with cancer uh, in 1995, and I had to semi-retire after that. Uh, but uh, being lucky and with the help of friends and family, I'm a, I'm a survivor and cancer-free. Uh, I'm very familiar with the with International Village and its governing condo documents, and also Florida Statute 718, which governs the uh, the, uh, the, the the laws that govern condominium operations. I successfully completed the Community Association Management course and began my involvement in International Village in sales, leasing, and property management back in 1998. I've been an active advocate for the rights of unit owners, landlords, and tenants for over 10 years. As I said, my family and myself own three units here in International Village, and I'm here almost seven days a week. And people say, well, you don't live here. Some people think I live here because I'm here all the time, but uh, I, uh, I spend a great deal of time here, and I have, a, uh, I don't know, a compelling interest in seeing this place succeed. And people ask me why, and Jerry thinks I'm a masochist, but it's just something I think I can help uh, lend my talent to and make a difference. So uh, my goals when I became a board member here at the, uh, at the village, uh, uh, a year ago, there weren't very many active committees, so I volunteered to head up five different committees to get them going. One, the first of which was architectural review, under which I established standards required for new owners of foreclosure upgrades implemented a water conservation and flood prevention plan that could potentially save the village over $100,000 a year. Uh, we're still in the process of implementing this, and it's going to be a big part of this year's uh, implementation of things that began last year. And it's very simple. I mean, uh, we have 1,800 toilets here at International Village, and about 1,700 of them are uh, running right now. <laughs> So we're wasting a lot of water. We're going to spend uh, $525,000 uh, projected for 2010 on water. Last year we projected 425. dollars So implementing the, uh, the changes that I'm proposing would certainly offset the, uh, you know, those differences. And I mean, a, a pre-1980 toilet, which we have primarily here in the village, uses five, six gallons every time you flush it. Michael, excuse me. Yes. Okay. 
try not to get into we're, we want to be okay. introduced to you okay we'll get right, into well, these well, into these details okay. when the questions come up okay so okay. try to concentrate on 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 you we want to right. know you okay right. what you've done so under the architectural review committee i've come up with these ideas what i think yeah, we'll go forward with that amendment and uh, application review i personally rewrote the sales and the lease application forms which were 22 pages reduced it down to 12 pages simplified it somewhat but still maintaining the high standards that we all expect and hope for on uh, for incoming renters and, uh, and buyers uh, uh, i was also handed up the security committee and changes of the security committee proposed are to use the, use the gate to strengthen control over delinquent owners and delinquent tenants proposals to change the post orders at the gate which you can see now i think our security is improving greatly as this new security company is is taking hold we're going to have much better security this year than in the past uh, under delinquent maintenance which is a major issue here in international village uh, and foreclosures i've established amendments that will now which has now become part of our condo docs in, in the last couple months, which will give us the authorization to collect money, collect rents from the tenants of delinquent owners, of which there are over 100 delinquent owners, and at least half of those have tenants, and the owner's not paying their maintenance, they're not paying their mortgage, they're just waiting for the bank to foreclose and holding us hostage here. I call okay. them the free okay. riders. Okay, you've had it. <laughs> All righty, uh, we know, and thank you. Go ahead, that, you'll get into all those things perhaps when we get to the questions, okay? So you were in the, this committee, that committee, and that committee, okay, I and that's good I enough, okay? Here. Go ahead, finish so it upgrade up. the gym. Up, you did, year, you upgraded the gym. You don't need the, the, the details, help of the generous but you upgraded the gym. Anonymous Jerry. Okay. Okay, thank you very much, Michael. Okay, that's, we know that you're involved. You're an involved player, okay? Michelle? Okay, since we've had about 23 minutes of introductions, I'm going to make mine very quick and very short. Most people here know me. If you don't, my name is Michelle Tersigny. I've been living in International Village for two years. I came from New Jersey. I was born in Pennsylvania. My father was an attorney. My mother was a housewife. I have seven children. I've been married to my lovely husband, Terry, for quite some time. He is my backbone. Um, I'm business administrator for the Broward Surgical Associates. I have seven surgeons and I have 18 employees. Prior to that, I was a Northeast Regional Business Manager for the Shear Institute. I had four offices. My home office was in Las Vegas, and I traveled extensively. Um, I know contracts. I know how to negotiate. I know how to be fair. Um, I don't side with any one person. I want to hear everybody's viewpoints. I want to do what's right for the community. I want to get us out of the hole. I want to make things better. This village, I fell in love with from the minute I pulled in here to look at it. That's why I bought here. I could have bought anywhere and lived anywhere, but I think this place just is just an amazing place to live it's like a little bit of home and it's where i want to be and i want to do the best i can do for everyone thank you hello my name is marvin tau i've met most of you um i've been living here since uh, may of 2003 some of my background i grew up in new york uh, before moving to South Florida, I spent 16 years in the San Diego area, which I thought was paradise. Um, I did a cross-country trip in 2002, wound up in southern Florida, wound up here, uh, renting here for a while at International Village, loved the place. Uh, at the time, there was I had several family members in and around southern Florida, and, uh, and decided with discussions with the family that my parents should spend their last days here. So I've moved my parents here, and I've been overlooking their care. My dad's gone, but my mom's still around. Um, again, I um, when I lived in well, when I lived in the Bronx, uh, I was part of a co-op, and I served for a very very brief time on the board of directors of that co-op. When I moved to San Diego, I uh, was in a, uh, a homeowners association, and I served on the board of directors there for a couple of years. I try to get involved in whatever community I live in. Uh, I want my environment to be as good as possible, and um, at the time, the people who voted for me thought I could make a difference, and I tried to do that. Same thing here. From the moment I moved here, I tried to involve myself in the community. Uh, I was appointed to the board uh, in 2005. When a vacancy came up, I, and I 
was on the board for two years. Uh, during that two-year period, um, for those of you who remember Les Oberman, he was uh, the head of the committee that was charged with, re with replacing our uh, aging laundry equipment, um, the washers and dryers. Um, he passed away during this period of time. I was asked to take over the whole process. I uh, presented uh, um, the report to the board of directors. We wound up, the board then chose a system that increased our revenue by well over 60%. Um, and even though we've had some problems with the actual machine since then, uh, unfortunately it wasn't the machine's fault, it was ours for not maintaining the, the dryer vents. Bottom line is, I've tried to contribute to the association <laughs> in any way I can. When I was off the board for the last two years, I still maintained contact with the association. I've served, served on several committees and I'm serving right now on three committees. So uh, whether I'm voted on to the board or not, if I am, I'll do my very best to continue serving you. Uh, what I want is for the quality of my life here to improve. What I want is for the value of my unit to go up. Uh, I think we share those values. And every decision I make, every uh, opinion I make will be toward that goal. And if I'm not voted, I will still make myself available to serve on committees, to serve the community. I love International Village, that's why I bought here. I'd like to spend as much time here as possible. And um, I want your vote. Thank you. Okay, thank you, everybody. Uh, just pointing out uh, these uh, seven members I have thought to come here and introduce themselves. We have uh, six that uh, didn't make it. They were all presented in the same manner uh, by hand, uh, the invitation and the questions, but uh, for one reason or another, whether it's a football game uh, or whatever, they're not here. That's uh, Nicholas Bonder, uh, Daniel Coco, uh, Mark Jones, Terry Klob, Jane Surd, and Doug Wolf. Okay, so uh, hopefully they'll be at the candidates' night on Thursday. All right, turning to the questions, uh, I'm going to start right from the top. The association recently received an insurance settlement and has nearly two million on hand. Uh, how would you allocate those funds? Um, uh, it may be difficult, it may be easier for people on the board to deal with that, but uh, let's give it a try. And Marvin, let's start at the other end. Okay. Um, microphone. Would you pass the microphone to Michael? Yeah, to Marvin, please. We'll, we'll know. We'll know. And the door is always open. Okay. There seems to be two general schools of thought of what to do with this $2 million. Uh, some of you who are on Scott's email list thinks it's the greatest idea in the world for the village to get into the real estate business for the village to buy up um, foreclosed units and hopefully at some point down the line sell them out of profit and, and maybe have a little bit of cash flow in the meantime. Personally, I think that would be a, an extremely foolish way uh, to spend that uh, $2 million. I have been part of the finance committee which dealt directly with this issue and I believe the committee's recommendations are, are pertinent and important. There are some specific problems that, uh, maintenance and repair problems that we have here in the village that demand immediate